فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم ترجمة موجزة I summarize biography of the author of this book and his uh, lineage His name is Ali ibn Umar ibn Ahmad ibn Mahdi ibn Mas'ud ibn Al-Uthman ibn Al-Nu'man ibn Dinar ibn Abdullah ibn Abul Hassan So his name is Ali ibn Umar Al-Imam al Qutni his name is Ali ibn Umar is his name His name is Ali and his dad's name is Umar His kunya is Abul Hassan Abul Hassan is his Kunyah. Waddara Qutniyu. Dara Qutniyu bi fathi dali wa sukuni ta'i al-muhmala. So what do we do? We place a fatha on the dal and we place a sukun on the ta'. Addara Qutni. Nisbatan ila daru al-Qutn is an attribution to a big place. Mahalla kabira kanat fi Baghdad. It was a big place. That used to be in uh, um, Baghdad. And the word Qutl, I know you should all know, is wool, wool, wool. Huh? Wool. So it was a place, Dara It was a building, place, big place that used to be in Baghdad that they used to make the wool. Wooli da rahimahullah. Al Imam Dara Qutni, rahimahullah, he was born when the year was what? سنة ست وثلاثمائة 306 هجرية When the Islamic calendar was 306 هجرية He رحمه الله He was born He was born then اجتهد في طلب العلم من صغره The Sheikh He strived and he worked hard In gaining knowledge from a very young age الله أكبر And we always say this point, which is العلم في الصغر كان نقش على الحجر. Knowledge at a young age is like carving into a into a rock. And والعلم and knowledge في الكبر and knowledge in an old age is كالكتابة على الماء. It's like writing on water. Sah? When you try to memorize when you're young, sponge. It's like the kids' are, brain is amazing. But try to memorize something when you're old. It becomes very hard. So he, rahimahullah, from a very young age, he started to seek knowledge and to strive. And you know, brothers, as Imam Shafi'i said, لَن تَلَالَ الْعِلْمَ إِلَّا بِسِتَّةٍ سأنبيك عن تفصيلها ببياني ذكاء وحرص واجتهاد uh, اجتهاد If you're not striving, you're not going to learn And we always mention the statement That Imam Muslim in Kitab Al-Muwaqeet He brings معلقا The statement of Yahya ibn Abi Kathir Which is لا ينال العلم براحة الجسد Knowledge is not gained With A body that is relaxed. And I've said this before and I repeat it many times. Two things cannot work together. They cannot. Just like water and fire can't be together. They can't. And that is what? Being relaxed and seeking knowledge. They are two things that can't work. One would have to take the place. And you would have to choose from the two of them. Once you want to learn and you want to gain knowledge, you are going to see that your sleep, you're going to be deprived from sleeping. You're going to be deprived from eating. If you look at the, tar- the tarjama, the biography of the scholars, you find that they, the time that they hated the most was times of eating. And You see? They didn't like eating. They hated sleeping. You see, some of them, they forgot, they forgot marriage. You see? It's because their brain and their mind was preoccupied. This is what it was for them. So this is how he was, Imam Dara Qutni. From a very young age, he had passion and a drive and a, an enthusiasm for knowledge. You see, 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave him, he was very smart, intellectual. And my beloved brothers and sisters, one of the things that shows a person smart, and he's got, he's dhaki, he's smart, he's, is knowing to prioritize. That's dhaka. Knowing to prioritize. SubhanAllah, just today, I watched a clip of uh, a professor in, in, the, in the States uh, teaching his students. He took a jar. <coughs> he took a jar and he put inside the jar um, tennis balls. When he put tennis balls inside the jar, he asked the students, he said to the students, is the jar full? And they said, yes, it's full. And then he took... Um, uh, I think it was uh, black seed, dry black seeds. And then he poured it inside the uh, jar again and it would go in. And he said to them, is it full? And they said, yes. And then he went and he put sand inside there. Inside there. And then he said to them, is it full? And they said, yes. So three times they were saying it was full, but he was able to put more things in there. And he said something to them, he said, if I was to put the sand in there first, I would never have been able to put in the, the, pay, uh, the, the golf balls. Nor would I have been able to put in, and nor would I have been able to put in the black seeds, the dry black seeds. And that shows you is, the sand is the smallest in size. Don't preoccupy yourself in your time with things that are insignificant, that are little, with big things that you need to achieve. And that you focus and you prioritize. It was truly very important. That message was very powerful. And that's why Shafi'i preceded him in this. He said, Ya akhi, lan tanal al-ilma illa bi sitatin sa'umbika an tafsiriha bi bayani. Zaka'un. He mentioned the first one, you have to be zaki. You have to be very smart. You have to be clever. You should know that when others are gone and other people are playing and other people are joking and other people are wasting their time arguing, you're not about that. For you, it's about every lahza, every minute, I'm here going to benefit. You could sit there, criticize, critique, benefit. I'm not about that. My time means a lot to me that I will benefit from it and I will study and I will nurture myself with understanding. I'm not going to be how I was yesterday. I'm not going to be today. That's smart. That's zeki. Wahivran. And he was also a person of memorization. He could memorize. This book of his, Al-Ila Al-Warida, his book, Al-Ila Al-Warida, Al-Imam Al-Darakutni, Rahimahullah, it was said, his book, Al-Ila Al-Warida, Darakutni, it was said that he, he dictated it from the top of his head. An Imam was Dhabi, in his Sira Ala Minu Bala, he said, if, if, he said, if, Sira Ala Minu Bala, Imam Dhabi says this, he says it in the 16th volume, uh, page 449, he says, if this is true, that Dara Qutni dictated his book, Al-Ilal Al-Waridah, from the top of his head, then his memorization is at the caliber of Imam Ahmed, and Imam Al-Bukhari, he's of that caliber. And without a doubt, he did dictate that book of his, from the top of his head. Wallahi, when you look at it, it is an ujubah, it is volumes, I think it's 36 volumes. Daru Tayyibah published it. Ilal, he's been asked. Defects. And I, as I said before, Ilmul Hadith revolves around Ilal. And the Ilal is ghamid, it's something very hidden. You see, he was one who had that knowledge. Riwayat and Ruwat and narrators. He was an Imam in this particular field. Qalla an yujada fi. It was very little you would find the memorization that Imam Dar Qutni had to find it in anybody. Brothers and sisters, what we need to understand is these scholars, when they took knowledge from the land which they were in, they always traveled. So he stayed in Baghdad. This is where he's from. So he heard from the scholars of Baghdad. and He took the knowledge from the ulama of Baghdad. And then he went to other cities in Iraq like Kufa, and he went to Basra, and he went to Wasit, he went to Sham, he went to Egypt. 
and his ulama and the shuyukh that he took knowledge from are very large in amount. And anybody who reads Al-Imam al Qutni's books will know his mashayikh and his ulama. Al-Imam al-Khatib al-Baghdadi in his kitab Tariq al-Baghdad Al-Imam Khatib al-Baghdadi in his book Tariq al-Baghdad he said the following about Imam al-Dar al-Qutni he said the following he said كان فريد عصره وقريع دهره ونسيج وحده وإمام وقته انتهى إليه أثر انتهى إليه علم الأثر والمعرفة بعلل الحديث وأسماء الرجال وأحوال الرواة مع الصدق والأمانة والفقه والعدالة وقبول الشهادة وصحة الاعتقاد وسلامة المذهب والاطلاع بعلوم سوى علم الحديث علم الحديث خطيب البغدادي يسد الإمام الدارقطني was unique at his time he was a rare person رحمه الله who stuck out who was seen with distinct characteristics and attributes and he was the imam of his time. He was the end point of ilm al-athar. And ma'rifatu ilal al-hadith, knowing the defects of narrations and hadiths. Wa asma'i al-rijal, and knowing the men and the narrators. Wa ahwal al-ruwat, and situations pertaining to narrations. Whether it be sidq and amana, being trustworthy or narration not being taken from them. Also fiqh and adala. He was also a person whose knowledge of hadith and was powerful. Also fiqh. Not only that. وَقَبُولِ الشَّهَادَةِ وَسِحَةِ الْعَتِقَادِ His aqeedah was crude. Al-Imam al qutni he had the aqeedah to Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. وَسَلَامَةِ الْمَذْهَبِ His madhhab and his methodology was pure and it was clean. وَلِطِّلَاعِ And he also had read and researched and studied بِعُلُومِ السِّوَى عِلْمُ الْحَدِيثِ He also read books in other than ilm al-hadith. He has a book in ilm al-qira'at. He has a book in qira'at. He authored a book in qira'at. He was an imam in that field as well. Imam al-Dar al-Qutni, rahimahu Allah, he was praised by a lot of a'imah. Al-Imam Abu Hakim, Naysa Buri praised him. Al-Imam al-Dahabi praised him. Ibn al-Jawzi praised him. Khatib al-Baghdadi here we can see praised him. He's an imam that has been testified and been bear, like everyone has unanimously agreed upon ala jalalati wa makanati how high and how noble he is al imam al dar qutni left behind books from those books is his sunan sunan al dar qutni and ilal al warida which i said that he dictated from the top of his head he also has a book called al mu'talif wal mukhtalif which is a particular field uh, of science of hadith which scholars in Mustalah al-Hadith deal with he authored a book in that particular field and he has books other than that he also has books in Aqeedah and from the books that he has written in Aqeedah that we know of are three there are three books that he has written in Aqeedah he has written this book that we have with us today which is Kitab al-Sifat and the second book that he has written is Kitab al-Nuzul, which he talks about Allah wa Taala descending. Kitab al-Nuzul. And the third book that he has written is Kitab al-Ru'ya, that Allah wa Taala will be seen the day of judgment. That Allah wa Taala will be seen the day of, uh, the day of judgment. So he has these three books: Kitab al-Sifat, Kitab al-Nuzul, and Kitab al-Ru'ya. They are in the field of. They are in the field of Aqeedah. And Imam al-Dar al-Qutni, as Ibn al-Jawzi mentions in his Muntadam, that he died, Rahimahullah, the last day of Yawm al-Thulatha, when, when it was the seventh of Dhul Qa'dah, and the year was 385. 385. So he died at the age of what? 79. He died at the age of 79. Rahimahullah. So it was 79 and two days. 
رحمه الله رحمة واسعة. We're now, inshallah ta'ala, going to be speaking about this particular book that we have in front of us. This book of his, Kitab al-Nuzul. There's some things that we need to... Kitab, sorry, al-Sifat. The book we have in front of us, which is what? Kitab al-Sifat, written by Al-Imam al-Dar al-Qutni, rahimahullah. We need to speak about this book. So now we're going to be speaking about Thubut al-Kitab al-Dar al-Qutni, rahimahullah. The affirming of this book to Al-Imam al-Dar al-Qutni, rahimahullah. There's an individual who has recently, in the recent decade or so, or the last two decades, has directed his efforts against the people who stick to the Sunnah. And ulama is Sunnah, and Ahl is Sunnah. He directed his efforts against them. And who's been known for nothing except ignorance and atta'nu wasabbu li ahli al-ilm. Wa ulama is sunnah. Hassan al-Saqqaf. Whose um, jahalat, his ignorance and his lack of understanding had brought him to the conclusion that this book, Kitab al-Sifat, is not written by Al-Imam al-Dar al-Qutni, rahimahullah. And that is not his book. So inshallah ta'ala, what we want to do is, we want to respond to this false accusation. Because this individual has, he has atba', he has followers. يُرَوِّجُونَ مَذْهَبَهُ Who spread his madhab around the world. Who support him and aid him. So what we should do inshallah ta'ala is opportunities like that, we should clarify what is right from what is wrong. Especially when it comes to uh, the preserved knowledge that has come to us from the ulama of the sunnah. So there's three steps, insha- four steps that inshallah ta'ala I'm going to be ibn illahi al-kareem take to prove that this book is written by al-imam al qutni the first one, inshallah ta'ala, is any individual who has ever read a book of any particular individual. If you go today and you read a particular individual's book, whoever this person may be, it doesn't matter, and you've spent a long time in reading their books, you will learn their method of writing and their style. You would, you, you would know what key words they use. You would also even know their handwriting. You would also not know just their... You won't just know their tariqah to ta'lif, no. You'll also know their tariqah to istidlal, how they extract evidences from things and how they look at evidences. You'll always you'll see that. And if we do that to Imam al Qutni's book, Kitab al-Sifat, we realize that it goes in accordance to the other books of his that are unanimously agreed upon that are his. The style in which he uses in his book is exactly the style he uses in his other agreed upon books. But that will only become clear to who, Lakin? A person who has read the works of Imam al Dar Qutni. Not Kulla man habba wa dab. It won't become clear to everybody. A person who's mutali' who's read and has stuck by his works would know. Number two. In Tisharuhu, this book became famous. Bayn al ulama amongst the scholars. And the qa'id according to the ulama is what? وَالشُّهْرَةُ فِي الْكُتُبِ وَالشُّهْرَةُ فِي الْكُتُبِ وَتَلَقِّيهَا A book becoming famous and becoming accepted مِنْ قِبَلِ الْعُلَمَاء يُغْنِي عَنْ رِوَايَتْهَا بِالسَّنَدِ This is the qa'idah. That if a book becomes famous and the scholars they take this book 
and they accept it amongst themselves, that suffices us for having to even look at the chain of narration of this book to the author. That statement, that qa'idah, which is that, pay attention. That if an author, he writes a book, in Ayyam Salaf, and that book, book becomes famous, and all the scholars unanimously are transmitting and they're talking about it. We are in a position where we not need to look at the chain. And we don't need to look at the Senate, whether this book can be attributed to the author or not. We don't need to do that. Why? The fact that this book has become famous and the ulama have accepted it suffices us from this. And that is what Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, rahimahullah, he mentions in his An-Nukat ala Muqaddimat ibn Salah. Ibn Hajar did not finish his book of his. An-Nukat ala Muqaddimat ibn Salah. He died without finishing it. He died at the kitab, the chapter of Maqlub, if I'm not wrong. The nukat that he put on it. The tabaa I'm, I'm mentioning here is the tabaa to Adwa Salaf. That's the tabaa I had. Ibn, so you look at the first volume, page 160, based on that tabaa, tabaa to Adwa Salaf. Ibn Hajar says, and he's talking about this particular qa'idah, which is a shuhra to fil kutubi, wa talaqiha min qibali al ulama'i, yugni al riwayatiha bi sanadi. This qa'idah, he says, the following Ibn Hajar. Just to show you that we are not the ones who brought this qa'idah from our own pockets. Ibn Hajar says, لِأَنَّ الْكِتَابَ الْمَشْهُورَ الْغَنِيَّ بِشُهْرَتِي Because, he says, the book that is famous, well known, it suffices us, when the book is known and it's famous, it suffices us. عَنِ اعْتِبَارِ الْإِسْنَادِ مِنَّا Taking into consideration the chain in which that book has been transmitted to us. Ila musannifihi to the author. Ka sunanin nisa'i, like for example, sunan nisa'i. Mathalan. La yahtaju fi sihhati nisbatihi. We don't need an authentic chain of attribution of Imam al-Nisa'i's book to us. We don't need that. We don't need to look at the situation of every narrator. We don't need to look at the situation of from us to the author. We don't need to do that. This is something we don't need to do. That's the kalam of Imam uh, Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani. And this individual, Hassan al-Saqaf, who insulted Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu and who now, la shakka wa la rayb, he's falling into a rafd wa tashayyuh. He's becoming a shi'i, a rafidi. His reason for saying that this book is not written by Dara Qutni is because in the chain is Al-Izz Ahmad ibn Ubaidullah ibn Kadash. This individual, ibn Kadash, Due to him, he said that this book is weak and we cannot attribute it to Imam al But the response that we gave from Ibn Hajar rahimahullah ta'ala suffices us. The third reason, the third response is, ulama have attributed this book to Imam al Some scholars have textually clearly stated, نص على هذا الكتاب بعض العلماء مضيفا إله إلى دار قطني. Such as who? Abu Qasim, Abu Qasim al Taymi, Al Asbahani, Rahimahullah, Qawam al Hujja, in his Kitab al Hujja fi Bayani al Mahajja. There's a hadith which he uses from the chain of Al Imam al Darqutni, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Such as Al Imam al Dhahabi, Al Imam al Dhahabi, in his Kitab. Al-Ulu li Ali al Ghaffar. Page 171. He attributed three places in Kitab al-Ulu to Al-Imam Dara Qutni. 
if you go to Kitabul Arsh, Kitabu Al Arsh written by who? Al Imam Dhabi. He says the following. He says, Walahu Imam Dar Qutni. He says, Dar Qutni has Juzun, a small book. Fisifati. There's a small book. Fisifati. Who's saying this? Al Imam Dhabi in his Kitab Al Arsh. He says that. Also, Shaykh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. In Isdar Ta'arud al Aqli wa Naqal, the seventh volume, page 109, he attributed this book to who? To Al Imam Al Dar Qutni, Kitab al Sifat. Also, Ibn Hajar, Rahimahullah. But Ibn Hajar, there's a point I want to mention about him, how he attributed it. What was the reason by, why this individual, Hassan al-Saqqaf, Hadahullah, what was his reason why he, he weakened this book uh, attributing it to Imam Dar qutni Because Ibn Kadesh is in there, right? Ibn Kadesh is in the other two books of Imam Dar qutni as well. Kitab al-Nuzul and also Kitabu. Kitab al-Nuzul and also Kitabu. Uh, Kitab al-Nuzul and also Kitab al-Ru'ya. Both Kitabs. And also Kitabu al-Sifat. All three of those books it comes through the chain of Ibn Kadash. Are you with me? So whatever is said about Kitab al-Ru'ya is the same thing that should be said about Kitab al-Sifat. And the same thing that's said about Kitab al-Sifat should be said, said about what? Uh, Al-Kitab al-Nuzul. Look what Ibn Hajar said about Kitab al-Ru'ya. Because the same ruling applies on Kitab al-Sifat, right? If they're all because of Ibn Kadash. And Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, in his Sahih, in Kitab al-Tawheed, in the 13th volume, he chapters a bab which is Babu Qawluhu Ta'ala Wujuhu Yawmaidin Nadira La Rabbiha Nadira. Are you with me? Al Imam Ibn Hajar, who is in his Fatul Bari, the explanation of Sahih al Bukhari, he says the following. He says, Jama'ad Dar al Qutniyu. He said, Imam Dar al Qutniyu collected Turuq al Hadith al Waridati fi al Ru'yati. All of the hadith that are present in Allah being seen the day of judgment. He gathered them all together. He's referring to Kitab al Ru'ya, right? He said, Ibn Adara Qutni has collected narrations pertaining to Allah wa Ta'ala being seen the day of judgment. Fazadat al Ishirina and it became more than 20. So Dara Qutni, Imam ibn Hajar is saying that Dara Qutni he collected. The narrations pertaining to Allah being seen the Day of Judgment and it just went over 20. So it's referring to which book? Kitab al-Ru'ya. And we said Kitab al-Ru'ya, who is the narrator of it? Ibn Kadesh. So whatever has been said about that book is also what's been said about Kitab al-Sifat. But if I'm not wrong in my memory, and my memory serves me right, Ibn Hajar, right after this, he mentions something. And he goes on to saying that Ibn Qayyim, has added extra and made it 30 in his kitab Hadi al-Arwah ila bilad al-Afrah meaning the hadith pertaining to Allah being seen the day of judgment are you with me? so he states who? a man which these individuals will not respect and will not acknowledge from but Ibn Hajar rahimahullah in his kitab Fatuh al-Bari who is he re- referencing here? Ibn al-Qayyim an, an alim will only know an alim a jahil doesn't know an alim you see? But what, what concerns us here is the fact that Ibn Hajar referenced Dara Qutni's Kitab al Ru'ya without saying that this is not authentically attributed to him. So, what is it that this individual Hassan al Saqaf saw and knows that Ibn Hajar doesn't know? But this is what desires uh, does to you as a person, it blinds you from the truth. And what is right from what is wrong. Also, what shows that this book, which is the fourth one, which is the last, the last thing that shows that this book is correctly attributed to Ibn Dar al and that is his book. The Asanid, the chain of narrations, Tadullu Dalalatun, Wadihatun, Ala Annahu li Dar al if you look at the chain, the Rijal that he narrates from are his teachers. 
These are his shuyukh. These are the chain that if you go to his other books, you will see that he, he uses them as his chain. So, this book is, is, is Imam Udara Qutni's key book. From those four different ways, it proves that it's his book. And inshallah ta'ala, we're going to conclude there for today, bi-idhnillahi al-kareem. And tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to start the book. This was only an introduction. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.